Hello, I'm Maddie Harland from Permaculture Magazine and I'm at the Oxford Royal Farming Conference 2020 and I am with Dr Anne Stobbard from Holt Wood, Wood. Herbs. <laughs> Get it right. And we are going to talk about how you became interested in herbs and where that's led you to over the course of your career and what you're doing now. Sure. Okay. So. I have had to address this quite recently because I've had to do some biographical material because of a book that's coming out which I'm very excited about, about yes. medicinal forest gardening. And it's made me think about well, where did it come from, that little seed of interest in uh, plants and medicines and, and so on. And uh, I was very fortunate to grow up near Kew Gardens in London and so my parents would take me to Kew Gardens when I was literally, literally a toddler. So I think it might have started from there. Although, I have to say, my strongest memory is actually falling down a slope into the pond. Thank you, God. Led to a broken arm. But oh, really? aside from that, it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I actually went into education and yes. uh, I trained as a primary school teacher. I started teaching adults. I was teaching uh, numeracy to adults and psychology was my first degree. And um, so I was in further and education for quite a while. And I had an interest in plants, so I followed it up with a correspondence course, which still exists, um, called New Vitality. And it was a one-year course in using herbs for yourself. Um, and it was at the end of that that I discovered that there was actually a programme for professional clinical herbal practitioners. And where did uh, you train? So this was run um, as a correspondence course with seminars, occasional weekend seminars and it was run out of Sussex. It, unfortunately, the School of Home Medicine no longer exists, mm. but their programme was then taken on board by a number of universities. And, and later, because of my education background and my training, I went to teach at Middlesex University, which ran the first degree as, um, in professional herbal medicine, mm. which was training clinical herbal practitioners, uh, meaning that they got really a four-year degree. They got a very good deal. Um, clinical training alongside all the theory of Materia Medica and mm. pharmaceutical uh, information. Mm. So, so that seed that was planted way back was also led me to grow vegetables wherever I could. I had millions of houseplants until I moved to a point where I couldn't. Um, and then I grew outdoors in somebody else's garden and then I finally got an allotment. I never actually believed that those two things would come together, um, which they did, because uh, when I eventually moved to Devon, practicing uh, in Devon herbal medicine um, and commuting to London to teach herbal medicine, my partner and I, we bought a woodland. Actually, when I say woodland, it was a conifer plantation, rather redundant conifer plantation. So uh, we thought that we would plant, uh, remove a few trees at a time and plant it up by bit, bit by bit and uh, we were absolutely mistaken. That wasn't really a practical possibility. For the first thing, I didn't know how to use a chainsaw and secondly, I didn't know how to fell a tree. Um, we did get some help but it turned out to be very expensive. But finally we were offered uh, an opportunity which we couldn't miss which was to, uh, the contractor took all of the trees which were Sitka spruce. Right. And cleared the whole site for us. How big was the site? Is the it, site? It's, it's two and a half acres. Okay. So So you clear fell two and a half acres, <laughs> no continuous cover forestry. <laughs> and to to cut a long story short, because I had done a permaculture course, yeah. I thought, right, okay, this is my chance. Um, I had been practicing uh, herbal medicine, seeing patients uh, in various places, in, uh, partly in a doctor's surgery in Somerset, partly at home yeah. and partly uh, elsewhere. And I had noticed how many tinctures on the shelf came from Europe or further afield, mm. including mm. things like hawthorn tincture. Mm. Hawthorn berry tincture is very good for circulation. Mm. I couldn't believe that it came from Eastern Europe. Mm. Uh, given that we have hawthorn hedges And you were everywhere. mentioning earlier today silver birch. Um, yes, so we have masses of silver in this country, so we, and yet we import it. From yeah, Europe. crazy. Yes, absolutely crazy. And witch hazel? Well, witch hazel is an interesting one yes. because, as a result of my interest in replanting this 
area, mm -hmm. which looked like a bomb site. Yeah. Um, I wanted to grow North American plants. There are some very successful North American plants in the Materia Medica, including one called Viburnum prunifolium, which is black hall. And actually, in North America, black hall is quite, it's not exactly rare, but it is somewhat endangered. There's a wonderful organisation there called United Plant Savers, yeah. who make a list, a bit like the red list, of endangered medicinal plants. And black hall is definitely on it. Black hall is very good for female complaints, anything crampy. Mm. Um, so it's a bit like an Agnus Castus type? It, it is, it works in a slightly different way. Right. So it's brilliant for things like period pains and mm. has it even been used in mm. situations like miscarriage, obviously mm. with clinical advice. Mm. And um, so knowing about that and other plants in North America, I decided to go out there when I took the opportunity to take early retirement from Middlesex University, because mm. I had been travelling up and down for a long time, to go to the States and find out about North American plants. Mm. And that really sealed my um, kind of idea, my vision of, of where we could go, because the, the environment in, in Northern America, it, obviously it's quite varied, but we had quite a varied environment at the wood, Holtwood in Devon. Mm. Uh, so I was able then to start a search for witch hazel, because Virginian witch hazel growing in North America is the source of distilled witch hazel. Mm. In fact, the world supply of witch hazel um, is really down to one firm. I think they probably produce something like 98% of the world supply, um, Dickinson's. Um, and they are themselves now beginning to run short of supplies of mm. witch hazel, which is an understory plant in the oak forest mm. in Northern America. So I then had to try and find these plants for the wood. But that's a whole other story. practice, teaching, uh, training up uh, more medical herbalists yeah. within the education system, now running private courses, having a woodland, a small woodland and the necessity of redesigning it, having to have it clear felled, replanting. Mm -hmm. So where are you now with um, medicinal barks and tinctures and what are you making? Okay. So at first the whole idea of the plantation was to serve my own needs as a medical herbal practitioner mm. and um, what we've rapidly discovered is the, the level of productivity. Um, the wood is good for us but it also could be good for lots of other people. And I started doing things like opening up the wood and saying whether any other herbalists would like to come and harvest. Mm. So inviting them in, um, following through on the um, black hall, the alternative to black hall, which is not endangered in this country, is cramp bark, viburnum, yes. oxus. Uh, we've got lots of cramp bark in the wood, so much so that I felt it would be good if other herbalists could come and... And the name somewhat gives it away yeah. that there's a very long tradition of very using this plant. Excellent for period pains, yeah. which would be more widely known. Yes. It's probably something we should publicise a bit more. But um, So we realised that actually there was far more than the herbal medicines that I needed. We also started putting in things which we hadn't really done at the first, like fruit and nuts and so on. And it was a family place as well to enjoy. So because there was so much produce coming from the wood, we started to look at alternative ways to use it. And you, you can't legally sell medicines 
um, for particular complaints yeah. without um, having proper licences. Mm. I could prescribe them to individuals, that would be okay. But you can't claim cure on packaging? But publicly, yeah. not, not possible. Yeah. But there are plenty of um, health giving, healing plants out there that mm. can be taken as teas, can be taken um, in cosmetic form on the skin mm. and so mm. on. So we started to look into ways that they, these plants could be used. And I have quite a long history of making things, gifts mm. for, for friends and family. So that was a perfect opportunity to, to develop the line that we now call Holtwood Forest Garden. Forest Garden Body Care, which um, we, we sell a few things online. Yeah. We, we just make um, enough to keep it in stock. We make small batches, yeah. make it to order really. There's a few things which um, don't include in elements from the wood. But and most then do. you're teaching courses and sharing the knowledge that yeah. way, and you write articles, and you've also got a book coming out. Yes. You did mention it, but say the title again. So it's the Medicinal Forest Garden Handbook. And it's all about how you can put together a medicinal forest garden in any situation really, a small cottage garden through to um, a larger country garden or woodland context or a small holding or a farm. And in the book I've had to be very strong and decide on 40 profiles of key trees and shrubs that could be used. But there's lots of other information about how to harvest effectively, how to dry, what sort of recipes might be appropriate and even thinking about scaling up since a medicinal forest garden can be so productive. Yeah, it could be an agroforestry system. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much for talking about <laughs> this with us today and You're welcome. if you've enjoyed our film please subscribe and hit that little bell button and we'll notify you about every new film we release. Thank you very much for watching today.